Hello and welcome to um, another One Stroke Advantage lesson. I am thrilled to have this landscape for you to work with and showing you how quick and easy it is to do a landscape is going to be fun today. So let's get started and let's pull the colors that we need. So we are going to use some either cobalt U or and white or medium blue. We still will probably use some white. So those are the first couple of colors that we're going to get started, but we need our citrus green and our sap green. And I have for all of you who are hydrangea or tulip, I do have the downloaded um, pattern and the, hello, <laughs> the pattern and the step outs for you. So it'll make it really easy for you to see up close those. And if you're teaching this, it's a great way to show somebody a first landscape that is very simple and easy. And we're going to use 11 by 14. And you can use any size you want. You can even go smaller or larger. So it just depends on um, when you change the sizes, what size brush you're going to use. So I appreciate your guys' support. I appreciate you being involved with our program. And I want you to be inspired to paint for profit or to, um, and teaching is painting for profit too, but teach others because teaching others, whether you're in a, a senior center or you're working with children, they love, I can tell you from five to eight year olds up and teenagers are excited about this painting technique because we blend shade and highlight in each, each stroke or each sponge that we uh, apply to our canvas. So it's really fun. So I'm excited to jump into this project today. And I hope you enjoyed as much as I did painting it. Thank you. So let's get started. So we're going to go down to our canvas. And we are going to work on the top of the canvas to start with. Okay. So I am taking um, my foam plate and I'm putting out the medium blue. All right, this is folk art multi surface paint. Okay, and I do put some medium out always for when not, not when I'm doing glass paint, but I do put it out for canvas, wood, um, any of those surfaces. I want to use some of all this paint. All right, then I want wicker white, and unfortunately. I have every kind of label that Plaid's had. So you might even see a new label coming out again <laughs> because different retailers ask for different labels. So it changes us up a lot. So then we have citrus. We have sap. All right, I pound this paint down so that it comes out really good for us. And then I'm going to put a little bit of daffodil daffodil yellow all right because that looks good in the field um, of greenery that we're going to do then I take and I tap so it spreads it out so I can work with that easier all right so the first thing I want to do is take my painter sponge this is what these are my painter sponges and I am looking for that one looks that was a really old sponge with a different background. But this sponge, when you're using wood, or um, if you're on wood that where it raises the green, I made it where this edge can knock off the green, like kind of like sandpaper. So it makes it really nice. All right, so we're gonna wet, dampen this. Then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of both blues. All right, so all across the top here, the greenery, the trees are gonna be all up here. But over here, they're going to come down a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to do the edges. So what you can do is with a push pan, you can hang these on the wall and not even worry about framing them if you're using a wrap canvas. So it makes it kind of fun. So I am teaching this in an hour. So I want you to think if you had two hours for your students, um, how much fun they would have step by step with you making this project happen. I charge 25 to 35 for lessons. 
usually I say if you take four or more lessons with me and pay for those, you can have it for $99.95. And I know some of you just want to paint yourself and you don't really don't want to teach, but you never know when it will happen to you where you say, huh, I'm really liking this. And I, I have so many canvases and stuff. I need to help pay for my education here and as I'm learning. And teaching or selling my wares helps pay for that. Okay, so see, I want it kind of cloudy looking. And just in here is where you're going to see the blue. So I'm trying to get a little bit of a different look. So I make circles and then I tap and it blends it in. Okay. And then just make sure you do the same on the edges. Okay. Sometimes I don't look up there and see, but I'd like to do it while I'm doing it. So I don't have to come back later. All right. So next, I'm going to decide uh, right along here. I'm going to not even worry about cleaning this. I'm going to do sap and some citrus. And I'm going to start dropping that sap and citrus. Okay. So I'm going to come along here where I want this to be. All right. So we have a pattern. I want to go up though. And you can trace this on for your students before class starts if you would like so they know how far each of uh, these colors would go okay so i want there to be depth and then along the bottom of here we're going to have some more light all right now we're going to come back and do detail in there but i'll just show you really quickly how that happens and then I could start pinching the sponge to get a little bit uh, darker. You have to have dark to see light. So that's a really good thing that helps you. Okay. All right. Make sure I come around the edge. All right, now this definitely doesn't give us the pretty look that we need right now. This is just giving us some background to what we're going to be painting. Okay. All right, so there we go. Now we'll come back with a scruffy brush and we'll get some of that shading. Now, what I want to do is take a little bit of white and start going along here. And right back here, it's like the light's hitting it. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in this area. That's kind of in the back. And then let's come across here some. All right. And on the side, I want to go ahead and go all the way down on the side, guys. All right. And on the bottom, that'll help me. Okay, so then I can just leave it laying here. And I'm going to pick up, there was a little bit of darker green across the field in here. See a little bit, it's like right in here with some darker green. All right. Now I'm going to pick up both colors. And if I have a little bit of dark in here, that's going to be nice for that as these light colors are going to pop. Now I'll see how I put circles, but I don't want to see circles. So then I'm just tapping it. And I'm going to use my rake brush to come in here. If you don't have a rake brush, you can use a flat brush for now. A rake brush gives you some really fun detail. And my set of brushes has every type of brush you want in there that the 13 unit brushes I use the most, okay? So I have a rake, a fan, angle, silver, 
and three different size scruffy brushes, which I created, and a round of two scruff liner and all these flats. So it's got 13 brushes, must use brushes. Okay, so now and this has a glare on it. Let me see if I can get rid of that glare. There we go. All right, so already you're getting the illusion of the, the field that we're painting, okay? So now I'm going to fold this up and put it in the water so it doesn't get all dried out while we're painting, then we go paint it afterwards, okay? All right. Now, so I'm going to pick up my half-inch scruffy, the larger scruffy, and I'm going to fluff it. You need it fluff like it's, a, what do you call it? Like a makeup brush, kind of, okay? It's all natural hair. Only the scruffies are natural hair. So I've got, the others are synthetic nylon, which gives me that spring I want. And then we have, no, that's another three-quarter. Oh, here's a half. All right. And whether they're green brushes, which are my student, my starter sets, or 10 brushes. And this is a flower brush, which are the ones I just showed you, or signature brushes. And everything with a flower on it with my roses are the uh, specialty brushes, okay? All right, so I'm going to start out with um, the half inch, all right? And so the first thing I want to do is I want to pounce or dry. This brush has to be dry. Usually I tell you to take the brush into water. This one's dry. So I'm taking this and... And I'm pouncing a little bit of dark. Let's turn it around and put some light in there. All right. So when I'm doing the light, putting this right on top of here, I might put some white in there also. So when I get white, I just put it a little bit. So I pounce hard to pick up and light, light, light over here. So what I want to start seeing, I'm going to come across here, hard, like trees in the background. All right, and we come up here a little bit of white. All right. Now I want it darker down here. Because that's down deep in the back there. And along here too. I can also pounce a little bit of yellow. Okay, so look at that close. All right, let's get a little bit more. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this is a half inch. It is better when it's down. I just wanted to try to see. Now I'm going to put this to the side on a paper towel while I'm doing the other colors, all right? Now I'm going to go to a bigger, fluffier one. The That brush, the half inch, is real tight, um, but the, because it's shorter too, but if you want more spring, all right, we're going to come over here, a little bit of white, work it in. And so see at the light. All right. Now what I want to see is let's come down and move it forward a little bit. All right. So I can also
down here. I am going to come right up on here. This doesn't bounce like this when you, you can put a book or something underneath to make this not bounce so much if it bothers you. Okay. All right. Now I can come in here with some darkness. A little bit more. See, it just looks like trees. Okay. I'm going to come up here. Okay. Oops, that's too much. So let's put the citrus back in there. All right. All right. There we go. All right, so what this should be is just in the background. It's like, I'm gonna get more sap in here. What's gonna happen here is we're gonna be focused on what's in front. But right now you're focusing on that and we want it to just look like it is trees and a forest back there, okay? There we go. All right, so that's just all back there. Now let's look at the front here. Now, when we do do some of these flowers, they're gonna come really high, all right? And so I'm going to put these two brushes to the side and I am going to use a rake brush, but I'll show you how we can do a flat brush too. Now, I, if I'm not sure I want this, I'm pretty sure I can put this away right now. I'm going to just put it in the water for right this moment and I didn't use the small brush yet, All right? <clears throat> so what happens is we're going to come in here. I, I do have the medium a little bit. And I'm going to pick up some white and green. And I'm just going to start coming back here first. See, now I'm going to go back and forth, back and forth. Now I want to show you what this brush looks like. So um, you can see, well, see, there's a little halfway about right there. They thin it out, so there's just a few there. And then down here is thick, just like a, the regular brush. And if you're, I'm looking, if you have my dark green um, brushes, the uh, standard one-stroke brushes, it's an arch a little bit more like a filbert looking. All right, and I like them both in different ways. Okay. So, so we're going to try not to use medium. I started out with a little medium because what I love is I, I dampen it a little bit sometimes, but we're just working with paint, not water, not medium. So see, I can make this move a little bit. That kind of fun. All right. So as we come over here, because this is taller grass, 
All right, so see how this was light in here. So look what happens now. I can do a teeny bit of water and then come into this area here. See that? So I'm letting this lighter area in there separate it. Just like I'm barely touching this, like if I had a feather. See, it looks like a different field. All right. So I'm going to show you down here. This is something I like to tell you. I had dropped water there. Well, no matter how much I cover that until this is dry, you can't cover it. So now I can come in here and just uh, cover it up that way. All right. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to go crisscross, crisscross, flip, flop, flip, flip, slip, flap, slip, slap. Hello. I used to say flip flops and people laughed at me. So it's slip, slap, slip, slap quickly. And it just makes movement in the ground. Like it just, instead of being, uh, see, it looks like it moves. All right. And then sometimes, like I told you, I'll come right in here and make some of this grass a little bit higher there. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to put some yellow in those fields. Right, citrus. There we go. Okay. And if you saw the worksheets, we have some steps of those, the greenery. As we stroke it here, it will make it easier for you. All right. So now look at everything. So I think it's kind of pretty just like it is, okay. Uh, I like to smooth that out a little bit. Okay, so, all right. So I have a little bit of white, yellows, all right. These are all sap and citrus. And then I'm ready to start putting some of the branches in. So I'm not using this brush because it doesn't have a good chisel because it's all chuppy, right? But look how fun that is. I use that same brush for beards of gnomes and Santas and hair um, when you're doing girl, you know, long hair, short hair, whatever, all right? So this is what I want to share with you. We're going to put out a little bit more sap green, all right? And I did put a little bit a Pueblo down, okay, Pueblo. And you could use burn number if you want to, but um, we can put a little bit of burn number down for those branches, I think, let me see, there we are, for the stems of the yarrow, okay. Okay, <laughs> I pulled another rake brush instead of because it's got a good size on it. Excuse me. Get a twelve. All right. So what's going to happen? You don't have to let anything dry, by the way. But I'm going to come in here with both sides of this brush with sap. All right, now some of these blossoms go all the way to the top because this is what I want you to think about. I want you to think that you are down here taking a photograph and these are right in front of you. These are right in your face. They're very thin little stems that are gonna be holding So they don't have to be smooth and perfect. They, it sputters a little bit because everything is wet, which is a good sign. Gives it a cool look. 
Just keep getting more paint. And so you're lifting the brush up, the front edge of it's lifting up. All right, now these blue flowers, I think, turned out really pretty. Now, when I Y all this off, look, I'm on the main stem and I Y off. And I come here and I Y off. I come here. See how it's a Y? Please don't come straight out from these. Okay. Okay. And we do have, like, we can put little ones across here. All right. So see how that looks like it's right in front for us. All right. Now this is going to dry. Well, I can go ahead and put some of the leaf. All right. So let's put um, some of this leaf. I've got a 12 and I've got sap. And I'm side loading. I've got sap and the side loading the citrus. So I want citrus on one edge, but that's citrus, so it's not going to show too well. So I'm going to side load white and work that in. All right. So this is another leaf that is on the worksheet. So I want you to look at it close in case you don't have a worksheet. Let's see. So you have the permission to print out those sheets for your students. Okay, there. And actually they're a little bit longer. Oh, I'm off. So I have to tell you what I found from my painting parties and teaching people how to paint is I love how it builds my confidence because even if you're a beginner, if you've been painting with me, you know things they don't know. And so they are so excited to have you teach them. See, I put a little bit of white there. All right. I want to do a couple more up here. All right. It's just like if you teach your sister or your neighbor and they say, oh, show me how you did that. All right. So I'm really working on pieces where you feel like you grow. We have all levels. And then the beauty of it is then you can go teach it to whoever. Or you can look really professional at those shows because you have blended, shaded, and highlighted. And they think you are this incredible artist. And you can make their colors to match their house. They love that. All right. So over here, I still need the green to dry. Okay, see all that green is dry. All right, so we just put some of these there. I'm going to come down with a little bit more um, little twigs and stuff in here. But I'm going to take and wash that brush. And then we're going to pick up some Pueblo and Burn Umber. Okay. So these little twigs here. What's fun about this is there is yarrow like, and we're going to put gold on the top of these. Okay. I'm pulling, see the little stems. All right. And it kind of reminds us of queens and lace stems. All right. So all you're doing is being up on this chisel. And you don't push down, you're really light. All right. And we're going to put a few more. You can see this is a picture of a field, like kind of by mountains or something, is what it looks like to me. 
And these are short and they're all in the field here, close up field. All right. And it kind of reminds me of status, the top of it. It's kind of hard branches. Okay, now that's ready for us to put the tops on it too. All right. So when you print out the picture, you're going to see these close. All right. Now let's look at the bottom here because there's a fun little greenery that I did on here. And it is, I can add just a teeny bit of blue to maybe a lot <laughs> of blue and then gives you a really pretty color for these leaves down here. Okay, so they come up, say I'm gonna come up to here and in here. Because what I want to show you is I'm getting these in here first. I'm showing you far away and then I'm going to come up and show you a little bit closer. All right, so now let's look. So I did the first pieces of this. Now I'm going to get citrus. On this edge, I keep, I'm going to come here and get citrus and white. Work that in. Okay. Now, how these little leaves look is they got little points. See the little points in here? All right. So we can come up like this. And just keep going over to where that white was loaded in. There we go. See that? It's just might be a weed. It's just some other greenery. It's nice to change up the color and the style of green that you have of the leaves. So look. I've got citrus and a little bit of white on the edge. I wiggle up and down, up and down, up and down. Or you can just come in here if you're more comfortable and pull them in. Now that's after you stroke some greenery there to go put this on to. All right. So let's look at that again. I've got the blue green and Get a leaf shape. See that? Let's go right here. Okay, basically, you don't have to make a perfect leaf shape, just put that color in there. Now I'm going to take the citrus and the white, and you're just going to zigzag on that edge. See that? Up and down, up and down. Or I did tell you, you could just pull this chisel, chisel around. If you need to do long and short ones. Okay. Now see how that's straight in a row? So if you're doing that chisel look, you're going to go up and in, up make it a little different okay instead of straight in a row all right now i did come over here and i take some brown in here Okay, so that's even closer, right? Now, I told you this greenery in the background, 
So I can take your flat brush and I can lay this brush flat. So watch, I'm flat and I can pull it like that. And I can also get on the chisel and go like that. Okay. Okay, let me show you. If I get a little bit of water and see how I got a little bit like this, and that's the flat brush. It's not as easy as the rake or the fan but you can still get that look. So there it is. I put water in it. I came over here and made it a little inky. And then I can also chisel this. All right. Just showing you a couple of ways because I don't want you to feel defeated because you don't maybe have a rake brush. All right. So we need to get a bigger view. All right, because everything's happening right here and all that's in the distance. All right. Now, if we make pretty little petals, we need smaller brushes. We make pretty little petals, then everything is going to look so pretty. I mean, we're going to detail the rest of it's not very detailed. Um, there's a two flat, we need more of a six flat. And then I've got an eight. Here's a six. Okay. Right. Now I'm going to put some little bit of yarrow in there. And that came with this brush. Okay. So we need yellow ochre. Okay. I'm going to put some yellow ochre. And what's fun is we can put some of this Pueblo at the bottom. Let's come down. Okay, so Pueblo. And yellow ochre. See, we like seeing some of those stems. And they're real tight clusters of flowers. Um, so at this distance, you wouldn't see a lot of that look. But see how I keep this separate? You can Separately, you can see that there are two colors. One's on top. Now, you're not close enough to see the little detail of the flowers in here. All right, the dark's on the bottom, the light's on the top. And I'm gonna pretend I have one right here. The branches, this. All right. Okay, and not like I'm pretty. Okay, so what happens here? These are a little bit darker. The little white blossoms will come out. All right, now we're going to put some over here. The lights at the top. The darks underneath. I'm going to put some dark underneath all this. Okay, you can do dark, then get yellow ochre. And this is your quarter inch scruffy. Okay, 
So now what makes this look good? See, isn't that pretty on both sides? Now, what makes this look really good? And you can make these a white blossom. You don't have to do it. Um, the um, yarrow gold color. All right, so I'm going to tap. First of all, get yellow ochre because we always double load pretty much and tap in some yellow. Let's see how that now it doesn't mean you have to do it on every branch, but it really does. The yellow ochre and daffodil. Not all three colors, just the two. See how I leave that one kind of alone? Okay. I think any kind of um, landscape you do where I my my thing I like to kind of be my signature thing is I like to act like I'm down on the ground with all my elbows laying down flat taking a photograph and these are right in my face. I did this with a Hawaiian scene the first time I did pictures that in front of my house was a, a really ornate palm tree and had really pretty palm fronds and I never wanted to cut them. And they would hang over if I'm taking people standing on my stairs, the steps, they would um, fall into the, uh, the photograph. And I love that. Then I would try to make them be there because they were just so fun. Now I'm loving that. I'm hoping that you see, you get depth by all the color, the branches underneath set the stems, even the short ones over here. All right, this is a different low brown weed <laughs> or whatever. And now we're gonna go all the way to the top. I hope you're having a good time with me. I'm enjoying um, creating with you guys today. Um, uh, the first little blossoms are going to be way up here, and we need to see the blue. All right, so the white's going to make it stand out. So I'm going to come here, except I'm picking an area where it's very light green, right? So now what I'm doing is I am pulling down, where's my paper? Okay, I'm pulling down little strokes. So, and I'm flipping the brush, letting white be on the top sometime. And then as I come down, I want you to see, I like to put some darker. This is a six flat, darker in the back. And then I can come back with the white and light blue. That was with cobalt. And then I can put some flower, lighter flowers in front, okay? Okay, so we're still doing little branches so see it's simpler to go around and put some of these little guys in here just the light ones all right All right, so they're 
This one right here, you really can't see. So I'm going to, there we go, put some white up there. So these are the light ones. And these are medium blue and white. Flatten it every once in a while. So, and the, and I waited till the green's a little dry. All right. Okay, now what's really pretty on these is let's get let's get some bigger blossoms. Let's do a couple of those. All right. Now some of these, I put the dark in the back. Let's do a couple of those. Gives it more depth. All right, so there's a triangle. It helps you lay them out. There's another triangle. Okay, so I'm going to go right into the light blue. All right. Now the key to make these look really good is they have that variety of color. So when I, I they were all flat in the same color, which the picture kind of shows that a little bit. But then if I came in here and I put some darker blue in the middle, like these, I did the white in front, right? But on these, I, you can make a, a U like we do in a trumpet and you can pull the blue from there it's the cobalt u all right i use that blue a lot okay so see how that gives us a really pretty look now um i can come around and just do some little ones now they, I, I keep wanting to put blue, I mean yellow center, but if you put anything, it needs to be the, the cobalt bright, bright blue. Or you can put a little bit of citrus. All right, so say if we just go to the center and put a little teeny dot of citrus, because yellow will make it too much. You could do yellow, but I'm trying to get a different look. And I use my uh, kiss tool to do this or I uh, can use number one round. All right, so we're going to come down and grab some of these bottoms right here. I don't think you can see that. All right, I did one, two, three. Now, if I'm teaching some beginners, I don't do this, but I'm just sharing with you. You can get even a more 
detail book. I pull in some of these. See right here. I go one, two, three, and pull. All right, one more up here. One, two, three. And I pull the sap. All right. Here we are. Okay, so. There we are. So I hope you like that. I think it's fun, quick and easy. And you can leave off any of this extra um, grass and look that we did in the background because it's just back there and it's not totally needed. Scruffy all of these and then start putting all this fun stuff up close. All right. You kind of these some of these looks are what you would see also in a desert. And so you could do cactus here and this look at the bottom. But I'll see you next time. Please. Um, share with us, share on our Facebook group for One Stroke Advantage. You can go to Donna Dewberry's official One Stroke group and share what you're doing on your One Stroke Advantage. And especially if you start teaching anybody, even if it's one person, take a picture and share on the Facebook group. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next week.